In this video, I'm going to talk about and show you how to use a communication approach that we use a lot in class. You might have seen it or heard about it being called colourful semantics, if you've seen sentences that look like this before. But in this video, I'm going to call it three-part sentences, because that's a little bit easier to say. So we use three-part sentences in class to do several different things. We use them to encourage communicating in longer sentences. So lots of our young people are really good at giving us one or two words to tell us what they want. This approach encourages them to add more detail and build longer sentences. We also use it to support sentence writing. The students use this approach to compose sentences before they write them down and to develop social awareness. So these three-part sentences are one of the main tools we use in class to develop students' social skills by making sentences about what other people are doing and develop their interest in other people and what they're up to. And some of the research for this comes from the CERTS model, which I'll put a link to more info about in the video description. So how does it work? As you can see, each sentence has an orange bit a yellow bit and a green bit. The orange bit is for who, that's the subject of your sentence, usually a person, but it could be an animal or a character. The yellow bit is for a verb, also known as a doing word, and the green bit is for an object. So you end up with who is doing what. I'll give you some examples. This next part might be fun to watch along with your young person. Pause the video and see if they can read out or point to the symbols. Meg is watering the plants. Ayumi is brushing her teeth. Meg is brushing her hair. Ayumi is throwing the ball. Sometimes we'll use a grid like this one so that students can choose the right symbols to describe a picture. Let me show you. What's happening here? That's right, Meg is pouring the milk. Now, at school, we have lots of these lovely symbol boards so that we can really easily put together sentences like, Melissa, help, toilet. But unless you're a teacher, you probably don't have Velcro and laminating pouches around to make one of those. So I've tried to come up with a way you could practice at home using things you'll have lying around. It starts with this document which has some symbols on it to get you started. You can find the link to it in the description of this video, and it's also in the Dover Home Learning Google Drive folder. Print it out, and then you'll also need some card, you could use cereal box card for this, and a lump of blue tack if you have some. You'll also need scissors and glue. Once you've got those, it should be easy to cut out the symbols and stick them on the cardboard and then pop some blue tack on the back. You'll notice some of the symbols come ready-made, I've tried to get you started with a few, but there are also lots of blank ones so you can make your own. I've made one for my cat, Pancake, and some string, which is one of Pancake's favourite things to play with. Once you've got a range of symbols to choose from, you can start making sentences, like Pancake is playing with the string. Now you might have noticed that I added a few things when I was reading the sentence back. I didn't say pancake play string, I said pancake is playing with the string. So I added in the little words that join the sentence together. Now this is something that you could get your young person to do if they were already really confident putting these three part sentences together. If they're not yet confident, then we don't worry about the little words. But when we, as adults, read out the sentences, we add them in, just so that the students have a model. One final thing. You'll notice in the printable symbol document I sent you, there are some blue symbols. You can use these to turn your three-part sentences into four-part sentences by adding a place on the end. For example, Meg is watering plants in the garden. Once you've made up a set of symbols, your young person can use them for all sorts of things. For describing what's around them, but also for making sentences about stories, TV characters, computer games and family photos. If your young person makes a sentence they're really proud of, 
you can take a photo and send it to me on Evidence for Learning. That's all for today. I hope you found that useful and it's given you some ideas for things to try at home. Thanks very much to Meg and Ayumi, my fantastic TA team, for appearing in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.